planet Earth, the place that makes all life possible. Our very existence depends on the well-being of this planet and everything in it. The Earth has survived for over 4.5 billion years, going through the impossible to become what it is today. Created from gas and dust, the Earth went through incredible pressure, survived toxic chemicals, melting, and being knocked to a tilt by meteors in order to thrive as a strong, diverse, beautiful planet that has been home to all of the biological diversity we humans have ever seen. From bacteria, animals, and insects, to wetlands and forests, every living piece of the Earth makes up biodiversity. In order for the Earth to sustain our species for future generations, this biodiversity needs to be protected. Without it, human life would not be possible as it provides basic necessities for life, such as food, water, fuel, and shelter. The goods and services provided to the Earth through biodiversity is numerous, but it's also irreplaceable. It naturally purifies air, water, pollinates plants and transports seeds, decomposes waste, regulates climate, controls pests and disease in agriculture, renews soil fertility, recycles nutrients back into the soil, and allows for the development of medicines. An article by An Upshaw depicting the importance of biodiversity provides a quote from the Convention about Life on Earth saying, The richer the diversity of life, the greater the opportunity for medical discoveries, economic development, and adaptive responses to new challenges. It is safe to say then that the conservation of biodiversity should be a top priority in our society, but recent decades proved the human race to be counterproductive in that feat. According to the Global Biodiversity Outlook 3 in 2010, there are five predominating threats to biodiversity, all of which have anthropogenic roots. One, habitat loss, including deforestation and degradation. Two, climate change and increased greenhouse gas emissions. Three, pollution and nutrient loading. Four, overexploitation. And five, invasive species. But what does it all mean? How have they become threats? And what is being done, or what can be done, to conserve and replenish the biodiversity on Earth to make life for future generations possible? Let's start with threat number one, habitat loss. This includes deforestation, soil degradation, loss of fertile topsoil, erosion, and much more. Starting over 4,000 years ago in China, damage to habitats has increased tremendously, with the United States taking its place in line about 200 years ago. The presence of forests is vital for producing oxygen, providing shelter and habitat for animals, and daily human activities. However, every year, 46 to 58,000 square miles of forests are destroyed for urbanization, ranching, and other forms of agriculture. The destruction of rainforest near the Amazon in particular is the most devastating, having a loss of 17% in only the last 50 years. As forests and fields become bare without any trees, the increased loss of topsoil and erosion of the soil becomes inevitable. Farmers plow their lands in order to produce more crops. However, when they do so, the topsoil is then blown away and the rich nutrients are lost, causing less diversity, an increase in deserts, and inevitably less productive farming. Brazil in particular loses approximately 55 million tons of topsoil every year, and it cannot reform quick enough to sustain this degradation which causes disastrous effects to the soil's fertility and plant life. As water from irrigation or rains hits the soil, erosion into streams causes both pollution and sedimentation in rivers or wetland areas, and at the same time causes harm to marine life by declining fish populations and species. Flooding can also become more common as the degraded soil can no longer soak up the water. In order to combat this loss of habitat, more and more farmers are changing their methods towards greener pastures. Some of these new methods include crop rotation, which helps in returning nutrients to the soil, intercropping, which slows erosion by providing more plant cover, contour farming, which aids in slowing erosion on hillsides, shelter belts, which combat against wind erosion, no-till farming, which keeps organic matter within the soil, and finally, terracing, which creates step-like fields to reduce erosion. Brazil has also been stepping up its conservation game by increasing law enforcement and policies issued by the government. Since Norway's pledge to give Brazil $1 billion in return for curbing deforestation and bringing back diversity into the Amazon's ecosystem, Brazil has decreased its annual deforestation by 75% in the past decade. Although deforestation continues to hurt biodiversity, this initiative is a giant step forward for conservation efforts. 
The second major threat against biodiversity is climate change and greenhouse gas emissions. In the past 100 years, carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere have risen from 290 parts per million to 369 parts per million, causing widespread warming at the poles. This warming is predicted to increase 6 degrees Celsius by 2100, which threatens the lives of many species who cannot adapt to the increasing surface temperatures. As the ice caps melt and sea ice becomes thin, sea levels will continue to rise, causing too much upwelling of nutrients, flood wetlands, and put every aspect of biodiversity at risk. Out of all the annual carbon emissions, 24% come from deforestation and agriculture as there are no longer enough trees to act as carbon sinks and soak up excess carbon dioxide. 25% come from electricity and heat as oil, natural gas, and coal that are being burned. 21% comes from industry as fossil fuels are being burned for energy. And 14% comes from transportation as we use gas for travel. In a world based on advancement, money, and use of natural resources, it is nearly impossible to see an end to climate change. However, if we don't attempt to slow down, a quarter of all species living on land could possibly go extinct, creating even worse stress on ecosystems and therefore human life. There are many answers for combating climate change, such as using renewable resources, increasing fuel efficiency, putting limits on industry's release of carbon emissions, reducing deforestation rates, and increasing education. But the rate at which these ideas are being implemented is crucial. The longer we wait, the less prepared we will be when these natural resources run out, and the less likely future generations will be to thrive. The third major threat against biodiversity is pollution and nutrient loading. Pollution in the environment can be spread in two major ways, point and non-point. Point pollution is easier to combat as it can be pinned to a certain location, such as waste discharges and air pollution caused by power plants. However, non-point pollution is harder to identify and includes all types of plastic waste that do not have a specific source. Unfortunately, a large portion of Earth's pollution falls under the non-point umbrella. Oceans and water bodies experience the worst of it as they collect most of the litter that accumulates on the streets, and also the runoff filled with pesticides and fertilizers. The organisms living within these places have to face sickness and extinction as more and more trash is dumped without regulation. Fish populations in certain areas of the world have severely decreased in recent years, and the birds who eat those fish either die or produce eggs with very weak shells, making them susceptible to otherwise unlikely predators. Both terrestrial and aquatic organisms alike are affected by pollution, including acid rain, as it's caused by condensing chemicals in the air, and acidifies the land and the oceans. Forests are also impacted by this rain, as it can cause damage to their bark, and can slow where their growth as the chemicals are absorbed. Ways to combat pollution have been implemented for years, and pollution has been decreasing since the 1970s. Banning the use of DDT in the United States was a large victory for decreasing pollution, even though the Earth continues to deal with the long-term effects. Stronger regulations on outgoing emissions can and have also helped reduce pollution, especially when there's incentive to do so. Everyone on Earth can help reduce population, just using a little less energy every day, such as turning the lights off and carpooling, or by recycling paper and plastics. The fourth major threat to biodiversity is overexploitation. There are many species that are overexploited in the world, including fish, birds, exotic mammals, invertebrates, and even plants. The most popular species that fall victim to overexploitation are mammals and fish. Hunting mammals has always been popular, but at what point do we stop? On top of being hunted illegally, many large mammals are also traded and put into captivity whether it be for zoo or research purposes, which causes decreases in local biodiversity. Perhaps the most overexploited animals, though, are fish, as the fishing industry has become the most rapid-growing food industry. Estimates by the Food and Agriculture Organization show that over 70% of all fish species are either already exploited to their full potential or completely depleted. Not only are these fish fully exploited, but the rapidity at which they are being fished is also causing extreme decreases in their size and could eventually cause their extinction. A couple ways that overexploitation is being dealt with is through implementing governmental policies, such as the Endangered Species Act, or by putting moratoriums on fishing, such as the Atlantic Cod Moratorium about 15 years ago. 
There has also been success with the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, or CITES, which monitors species and commercial trade. Although there are solid efforts for decreasing this exploitation of species, more education and outreach programs are necessary for people to understand the implications of their actions. The fifth and final major threat to biodiversity is the introduction of invasive species. This is perhaps the second largest threat after deforestation, as about 42% of threatened species are endangered because of the introduction of an invasive. Invasive species can be spread through a variety of ways, but are mostly due to human activities. This can include ships traveling from different countries, wood products being shipped across continents, or through pet trade. Once a species becomes invasive, it is very difficult to eradicate them because they can usually reproduce very quickly without native predators recognizing them as prey. In many cases, invasive species end up outcompeting the native species for resources and cause a decrease in the biodiversity of that ecosystem. An example of this could include the lionfish invasion in the Atlantic. The native species couldn't distinguish whether they were predators or whether they were prey and having very rapid reproduction rates, they were extremely successful in overtaking many ecosystems. In order to curb the introduction of invasive species into certain habitats, certain precautions must be made. It is important that the shipments of resources across the seas get examined because many ecosystems cannot handle the introduction of an invasive species. However, if a population does take off, the best response is a quick response followed by immediate action. The more time that goes by, the more time the species has to reproduce, the harder it is to eliminate them from that ecosystem. If complete eradication becomes impossible, animal hunts for certain invasive species is also an option to increase their population and their size. These are only five of the major threats on biodiversity in our world, but there's plenty more that need attention. The question is now, what are you going to do to help make the world a better place, not only for our children, but for generations to come? Step up and make a difference.